Okay, welcome to Vassals of King's Grave. Uh, in this episode, we'll be reviewing the fourth season, fourth episode of Black Mirror, um, focusing on a futuristic society where a system matches couples together and puts people through various relationships before finding their ultimate match. My name is Glenn Tycho Surfers from the, the podcast Face and Fire Forums. Hi, I'm David, David HHH on the forums. Hey, what's up? It's Shadow Baby on the forums, Hannah in real life. Real life. Mundo Jock 2 on the forums, Jock Mundo in real life. Hey, this is Tanya, Silence on the forums. Well, starting with <laughs> you, yourself, David, so this is the only episode that you've watched so far? It is. It is. I actually had just, I didn't even hear the show until you talked about it in the forum. So I'd heard the name, but that's about it. And then strangely enough, after you posted that and everyone was saying how good it was, someone at work, like just the day before was like, you have to watch this show. It's so good. And I was like, okay, now let me check it out. Especially <laughs> if we're going to talk about it. Why not? <laughs> Gives me an excuse to talk to you guys. <laughs> what a nice way to get eased into this show, I think. Right. I think it's a good episode for that. It feels very it's um definitely one of the lighter ones. Mm -hmm. True. That is true. Um I I watched it with someone whose whose first episode it was and he thought it was very, very dark. Um Really? I think, yeah. Really? I, I mean it kind Yeah. No, I mean, I mean the show yeah. itself is, yeah. Yeah, but have particularly having seen other Black Mirror episodes, this is not one of the bad ones. No. <laughs> bad as this was a happy disturbing. little ditty. Yeah. The forums do have that effect on me as well. That there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that people have mentioned or shows that have met, that have been mentioned on forums that then that you know I'm more likely to give it a try if it's mentioned on on the forums. Mm -hmm. In fact, as a yeah. shout out, we have a uh, podcast coming up of the best of the year. We're all going to give all sorts of recommendations. So Hannah and I have contributed so far i will soon yes. <laughs> if anyone uh, wants to talk to me about the firefly board game i'm up for that <laughs> yeah. um, um i haven't I, watched the show i agree though because uh, you know no offense to like my real world friends but i kind of <laughs> i respect oh. like the uh, opinion of people on the forums a little more just because most of the people in my real life haven't read the books, so I guess we all have yeah. a have a comparable taste on some levels. Yeah, because mm. like I could talk to a lot of people about a lot of things, and they're like, "Oh, have you seen Game of Thrones?" I'm like, "Have you read A Song of Ice and Fire?" I'm like, what's that? So, should we go around and say how many other episodes we've seen? So David hasn't seen any others, and Zero. I've seen <laughs> I've seen the first one of the season. Um, and this one and all the others but I haven't seen it as in like all the others of the previous seasons but I haven't seen any others of this season I've seen every single episode of all seasons I probably will soon <laughs> I binge watch this hard seems like the kind of show for that yeah I watched like the first three in no time at all and then I watched all of this season uh basically the day after glenn wrote that i just sat and did it all day i was in the middle of the crown and then i finished that and then i did black mirror season four we decided to watch something lighter after two episodes because we felt like it was a bit much for mm -hmm. one day but i did binge the first three seasons in like a couple of days or something so <laughs> Um, so how do you feel like it overall compares to, to other Black Mirror episodes? Does, is it representative of the show in general? Did you like it more or less or as much as the other episodes on average? This one, me. And it was my favorite <laughs> of the one <laughs> I've seen. Good. That is promising. <laughs> I'm worried if it wasn't. <laughs> it was, it, however, it is also my least favorite. <laughs> good point. Well, having been... I guess with the show since it began so it has its roots back before netflix it was on channel four in the uk uh -huh. so i watched it i think well it was on um around christmas time i'm sure 
no, uh, 2011. So I watched oh, good stuff. maybe a few days later um, when it originally aired and then was hooked on the first episode. <coughs> but then, I don't know, the second and third one wasn't as good. Then it came back two years later and similar thing, like the exp- explosive first episode, which was amazing, but then the other follow-up episodes weren't as good. But then when it came to Netflix, binge-watched all of those and then was quite excited about, um, well, I was checking up on announcements, news, articles about when this season would come out and there was various dates, November, December, maybe January this year, but was glad that it was released end of this this year and have watched three of the episodes so far. I guess with this one, I was attracted to this one because this was in most of the adverts that this is the uh, most heavily promoted of of the episodes, so decided to watch this sense. one first. And I guess it compared to the other ones, I feel like this is like <coughs> a happy ends on a happy note, whereas the other ones are quite down, downbeat, miserable, and quite dark <laughs> episodes. Cool. <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah, so, so my friend who I'm trying to get to watch this is going to hate it, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so I, I really liked it. And I thought, so so it has, so so the episodes that appeal the most to me are the ones that take some sort of technological concept and spin that a bit further. Um, and and that's what most episodes do, I guess. But but for example, the first one in the first season, I didn't, I didn't like at all. I'm, I didn't start with that one because I didn't understand how Netflix worked at the time. So I accidentally started with the third season. But it's good that I did because I don't think I would have stuck with it if I'd watched the first episode in the go. first season first. Um, and, and, and this episode... <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and this episode is one I really like because it's, it's got some interesting ideas in it. Um, and it, it has this technological aspect that I really like and, and comments on society. Um, it feels somewhat similar to me to the first episode of season three which is the first one that i ever watched that's the one with the with the with the like with the upvoting system no stive hmm? oh the episode's title is no stive possibly <laughs> i don't remember any of the titles but the but yeah i'm sure it's that one um and and i really like that one i mean that's the one that got, got me hooked on the series so so i i i overall really enjoyed it um it's quite Jock, your, your history with the show um, I think I started watching it in the second season on Channel 4, but not 100% um, sure, to be fair. <laughs> and which episodes have you watched from, from this season? Um, Just um, this one and the first one. <laughs> I wish you guys had all seen all of them, so... I, I mean, we can, I we can do another episode. I know. We, we need to, honestly. We can do one later, once I've seen them, once I've binged them all. I'd be yeah. so down for just doing one episode per episode. Me too. I'd, yeah, okay, I Hannah, would be. I'd be. So what's I'd the best be. episode that we can expect? In your opinion, that is. Oh, in the fourth my season. God. In the fourth season or in all of them? In the fourth season. The, yeah, they are. I think, I think the season finale is really explosive and... um. It has a lot more meat to, like, some of the other ones. It's, and it, I don't know, you got to get there and see it, but. Is it longer as it, well? Because I think the. It's a little bit longer, I think. Long. Okay. And it's, um, it's very dynamic. I think it's a few minutes longer and it's got a lot of dynamics going on in it. So the story itself's not really my favorite, but the way they constructed the episode is something I would like to see them explore more in future seasons. And I thought it was a great way to wrap this one up. And then the one that precedes that by contrast is so like the two of them buckled up together are really, really well done. And I think the one that precedes it is probably uh, it's the one that offers the most introspection and um, just like something to meditate and chew over i think so i would say probably those two last two 
this one was well, good because it didn't make me want to like kill myself or anything so that's good <laughs> i walked away so, from it feeling up <laughs> that's always good I, f- I still feel like i mean i don't i don't feel like it's as dark as as other people i've talked to think it is but i still feel like it's quite depressing and if you, if you think about the fact that these these characters that we know and we've gotten attached to on some level are just in a simulation and they're just gonna evaporate mm-hmm. after that so i guess that- it, it depends on how you view that i think it seems to affect different people very differently um i mean none of it actually happened really <laughs> yeah but so that's yeah. a bit mm-hmm. I, how do you feel about that I, I want to know what happens to them now <laughs> in real life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that's, I mean, that's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> well, there, it's it's an interesting philosophical discussion too. Is if they had all these experiences, but it didn't really happen, does does any of this matter? Did it did it actually happen? Like, if it was just a simulation, did it actually exist? Did it happen? Did I mean, these no, experiences right? happen? Yeah, I mean, well, because it's a simulation. Remember right? when Amy skips the rocks all the time and the. She keeps right. doing it, and she says, right. I... is it always four times? So I thought that right. gave you a clue that it does right. happen, and she has memory of similar things happening in the past. Oh, I thought but it I was mean... the opposite. Oh. I thought it was, that was our, that was my clue that this isn't real, right there. It was oh, like, yeah. okay, <laughs> this is a computer program setting the optimum number of skips or something, you know? I, mean, I figured it was a computer program, like a sim, some kind of simulation really early on, just because of Black Mirror being like Black Mirror. That is a good point. Because <laughs> there are a couple other episodes that do somewhat similar things. Um, and then the fact that I'm like, well, when do the fuck do these people go to work and stuff? Like, yeah, that's, we were talking <laughs> yeah, about exactly. that. Like, where do they live when yeah. they don't live together? Yeah, I was like, what like, society is this? Yeah. Those yeah. are like the first things that kind of started bothering us. We were like, well, where, is it, yeah. where, do, where do they go to work? What's, like, right. how is, what, what do their lives look, look like outside of dating? There <laughs> I mean, doesn't I seem to be anything just there. Goes, so. It just goes hikes, hiking in the woods and playing uh, squash. I didn't <laughs> yeah. think that it was going to be like what it was, which is a, basically a dating service. Mm. Um, but I thought it was going to be kind of like um, there's an episode in season one where Clearly, there's been some sort of societal collapse, and people live very restricted lives. Um, all like the second sort of series. Yeah, and so I thought it might be something like that, some sort of breeding program where you are in a simulation, perhaps um, maybe in space kind of thing, like... Um, if you're on a a ship of small amount of people, because when they have the little party, there's only a a couple dozen people we really see in that aerial shot Mm -hmm. of the crowd. Um, So I thought maybe this is some sort of children of men style breeding program, maybe in a (laughs) dystopian future Um, or, or some kind of maze runner style game, I guess, like Mm -hmm. again, in a dystopian future, but. Yeah, I like the I way figured, it turned out better than that. I figured that it was definitely some sort of artificial reality computer program, but I figured it was actually them in it, like that their consciousness was somehow in it and like VR kind of thing. So that That's they what could, I thought, too. And, and that was an interesting twist that it wasn't even them at all. That was the twist. Like, I totally expected that this world is fake. The mo- I, I was kind of already heading there, but the moment we had the... Uh, the, the stone skipping. I was like, okay, this is not a real world. They're going to have to find their way out of it. And I figured yeah. climbing the wall was the way out of it, but I didn't expect that it wasn't even them. <laughs> have you guys seen so, the lobster? Yes. That's okay. So that's kind yeah. of what I was thinking. You I know what I mean? I was thinking a lot about that. That yeah. was very similar. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like that. Cause again, a, like a weird breeding program in a dystopian world. I mean, just That's... like briefly summarize this without without any spoilers, The Lobster is a very <laughs> weird movie that I saw with with Bina actually a couple of years ago, and I have not yeah. quite recovered from it. And it's <laughs> kind of set up on on a on a somewhat similar premise as this one appears to be, and that there's a society where everyone's supposed to have a partner, and if you don't, then you need to go to this island where you're set up with someone. Is that how it works? <laughs> And yes. there's like some other weird shit going on, but like without spoilers, this is kind of. I don't. Um, I don't know if it's an island, but it's like yeah, it's pretty remote and. 
Yeah, I would I would recommend watching it, but I also have to warn anyone like that I have not recovered from it. I don't understand what on earth I I just, <laughs> I just haven't I just yeah. haven't recovered from it and I never will. And this episode <laughs> might have been a dark movie. <laughs> it is. Um, so oh, I feel like this episode was the lobster, but like less disturbing. What's your what's everyone's experience with dating algorithms? Which is I guess the sort of thing that this episode is about. I felt like I was on them all at one point, so <laughs> like I would try one, then it would get some minor success or no success at all. Try another one, the exact same guys would be on that one, <laughs> the, the new one that I'm trying, and then it would be just like the same, well, they were all oh, basically yeah. the same, and <laughs> the same yep. results from that. Yep. Although, success story, I met my partner through online dating. Well, there you go. Free ad there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's well, it's funny how the world is changing now. I mean, especially like as a gay guy, like almost all the dating and sexing and whatever happens is all online now. Like, you know, that's how you meet people. You know, everyone, oh. everyone's met someone online or whatever. And, I know, you know, I, yeah. was only one person in my life I've ever met like face to face. Everyone else has been online or some sort of oh. online dating. Yep. So this is the future. But it hasn't, you know, the thing is that most of those, the, at least at least the gay ones tend to be more sex oriented, even if they would pretend to be like, oh no, you're here to find your life partner. And then everyone's like, no, that's not really what we're here for. <laughs> they say that's, <laughs> they say that so they won't like get taken off the like the Android and the iOS stores. But, you know, <laughs> realistically, you know, people are sending you dick pics, you know? <laughs> But like in terms of like matching algorithms and stuff, I personally feel like on OK so so the way OKCupid okay for example works is that you answer a bunch of questions about yourself and your values and and life mm-hmm. and stuff, and you also like well, they don't um, work. you you mark which 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 answers are are sort of acceptable to you, mm-hmm. um and and then you get a matching percentage based on that. And I have to say that if I have a high matching per- like if I when when I was still on OKCupid, okay I felt like when I had a high matching percentage with someone that genuinely said something about how likely we were to get along. Though I guess it's also yeah. like a fairly straightforward way of of, of, um, of calculating a match. Like it wasn't, I wasn't guaranteed to get along with that person, but if I had a match percentage below like 80%, it was not then it was not worth talking to them because they were like racist, sexist, horrible assholes. And, ah, there you go. And, and, and so, so I feel like there was definitely something, something there in the algorithm that made some amount of sense. Um, though of course, I mean, I didn't, and I, and I didn't, I didn't find anyone through OkCupid, okay but I also didn't have any terrible dates. Like everyone I met up with, I met up with, um, I think like three or four guys through OkCupid, okay and 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 nothing worked out. But um, but I also didn't have any like horrible dates or anything. Like it was, like everything, every encounter was at least okay, and um, so so I feel like that one's not not too bad. And I don't know how I feel about the one in the show, like in, in the episode, hmm. because I feel like is I feel like this is a the running away together thing strikes me as a really poor success metric. Because right. I feel like there's so many other I mean, I wonder if there's other if there's other outcomes that count as a match or if running away right. together from the system is the only possible match. I guess we haven't really seen that. But right. if that is the only possible match, I think that's terrible because there's so many factors that would play into that. And there's so mm-hmm. many reasons why you would choose not to run away. And maybe like two people who wouldn't run away from the system Ever. for similar reasons right. might might we're just right. might actually be a very good match. And although uh, we don't know really the full algorithm, we've only seen these true. two. So that's it could be true. it could very well be that, you know, if two people are happy and settle down <laughs> together, that that's a match too, you know. Yeah, but but like at least at least what we saw struck me as a pretty terrible algorithm, and I was actually quite frustrated about that. <laughs> I care about algorithms a lot. Well, the funny thing is, you know, you've got almost two algorithms. You get the algorithm within the, you know, the algorithm within the actual like storyline. You know, you've yeah. got their algorithm. Then you've got the one that we later find out at the very 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 end is is what's going on. But we don't know for sure that that's, in fact, the only f- method of victory. You know, it could have been yeah, that, that's, that's you know, a... if we settle down and have babies, that's a win. You know. Sure. I mean, that's a good point. And, but but if it was like if it is the only if it is the only success metric, then I think it's pretty terrible. But maybe it isn't. 
Um, well, it's good if you're the kind of per- it's good if you're the kind of person who runs away. <laughs> if you're yeah, not that yeah. kind of person, yeah. you're screwed. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like two people who wouldn't run away for the same reasons might just be a really, really good match. So, exactly. and I and I also just just on the like for the for the for the kind of meta algorithm, I guess that pairs up a lot of people. Like, how did you feel about that whole system? Like being matched into 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 relationships. Oh, I was that horrified will help by that. Day. The fact <laughs> that you could be matched up with someone and have and to stuff. spend ten years nah. together and you hate each other. I mean, that's, yeah. that's true. I feel like I feel like they're having to stay together, but it doesn't. To me, at the end of the day, it it didn't seem like they're having to stay together with someone when you clearly don't get along seemed pretty terrible. But apart from that, it didn't seem that different from how dating actually kind of works because you do kind of go through a series of encounters with people and that shapes your personal idea of who right. you want to be with and right i uh, i think the algorithm in the story makes sense as long as you don't have a set end date like the set end yeah. date part is the only part of it that really doesn't work oh, like yeah. if you had the you know if you had the okay tanya i'm going to set you up with jock and if you two work out great and if you don't like there there's you, there needs to be a yeah. user like abort button you know <laughs> think, like, if there was an abort um, button then it would be fine to be to be fair, I also think in real life people often stay together for fear of not of not finding True. like I, in my in my first relationship I stayed in that relationship much longer than I should have because I True. was at the time very convinced that I would never find anyone else which was pretty ridiculous but never mind um, but I oh, know a lot do. of people feel that a lot of people feel that way right a lot of people stay in relationships much longer than they should and I feel like there was some value in that relationship that I could have gained from it by being in it for some amount of time um, but I also could have left it much sooner and i and i feel like i don't know it uh, it doesn't it doesn't strike me as that terrible the whole meta algorithm thing i'd probably be i'd probably be the kind of person who doesn't run away from it because i'm like i trust the algorithm if you find me a perfect match tomorrow i'll give up on this person i care uh, about I mean, the moment the moment like someone <laughs> did something that pissed me off and i was like done with them i'm done with them and i would no, be I'm, like yeah. i would totally want to be like I need out. And I can't imagine like, like, I mean, f- from the moment of like, you know, the great sex scenes they both have, you know, when, when, yeah. when she's like telling him, you know, like, no, no, I need to turn away from you. And like, no, no, that's not how you do it at all. I'd be like, okay, abort, abort, abort. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean I not, not being able to get out is, is an issue. I think, I think having the end date, that's awful. <laughs> having an, ha- having an end, having like a maximum time period is actually something I'm okay with. Oh, I just no. feel like not not being able to, to, to quit sooner is a problem. What did but, everyone think about? Um, so they both agree to have sex, so they click a button to see the consent. Oh, God, yeah, let's talk about the consent. That was perfect. <laughs> That's a great idea, at least for, you know, you got consent. And can uh, I just is say it that... Though? Is it, though? Is it, though? Is that really a great idea? What if you, like... Because you, cause you get to change your mind. Yeah. I'm like, oh, 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 right. I don't want to sure. do this. Hold on, I can't That's... reach my thingy. Oh, fuck, I'm stuck. Like, where? That's... It's, uh, I'm Although it's better than it's better than not having consent at all, I guess it's it's a step forward, if not the perfect solution. That is true, but it also strikes me as very. I don't know. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. I'm I'm a huge fan of consent, but like. I don't and know. it doesn't raise the issue of like if you're dating someone for nine months, I consented tonight, but maybe not tomorrow. That issue yeah. doesn't. But that's an issue in all relationships, I guess. So. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can toggle that, right? Presumably. You can I just, don't know. I don't know. I, I would hope Please. so. I would okay. hope that you can so, revoke so. consent on, on the whatever app okay. thing. Okay. I Although, know. I have to say, that was actually one of my favorite moments in the whole episode, when, when he comes out of the shower naked and hot as all hell, and <laughs> he's like, I will, uh, I, I find it's best if we have sex right away to break the ice. I'm going to hit consent. Whenever you feel ready, click, she had said. Like, <laughs> she had said, like, like mm, before she barely, barely finishes the sentence, I admit I would have hit that button even faster than her. <laughs> I didn't think he was that hot. I was not. Oh, my God. He was amazingly hot. I think hot, she's I really pretty, though. I'm really oh, into her. <laughs> Frank's better looking, though. Uh, not my type. Think. <laughs> I think she's really hot, though. I think she's very, very hot. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, the whole consenting gives me out. Of it. Moment, you know, it's a great moment where you know he's like, "Whenever you're ready, click. I'm ready." <laughs> mm. I don't know about that. I really don't know. <laughs> Love that. I also I feel like I don't know. I mean, I'm I I also it makes consent so like bi- bi- binary, I guess. Maybe I mean I don't know how, how I don't know how detailed this is I don't know like how many 
how many options there are and what you can yeah. specifically consent and not consent to. Like, he said something like he's consenting to everything, so there must be, like, options. But I just, right. it just weirds me out. I'm not a fan. I don't know. I didn't. I thought that was weird. Um, I, I mean, I'm glad they addressed it, I guess, as well. I, I, I also like I mean, that the system <coughs> didn't force them to have sex. No, that, I right. thought that was really good. I appreciated that. I yeah. was worried about that when they first, like, went to the... To the to the house right. thing. I mean, we're in a house together in a bed, and we have eighteen hours. Hmm. What what's the plan here? <laughs> well, I like how it gives you the ability to consent to. Because, let's be honest, when you're with somebody, um, you're like, you don't really want to be in the middle of getting down. Going, I'm into everything except for choking and anal. <laughs> you know, which is why you should be discussing these things before so. which is not i mean it's not like that's not me personally i'm just saying that's an example <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh <laughs> hannah um, we love uh, you hannah. seriously <laughs> seriously I mean, though this, you know maybe what i'd mean? rather have a conversation about it. i think it's i think this is super important but maybe well, i'd I rather have a conversation that's... about it than than like toggle a few Which, switches on a right. device but that's that's kind of why i like i like the idea of that though because you could so, like, still talk through it but so, like in the definitely... moment in the moment when you're like oh i'd really like to choke my partner now oh let me just <laughs> quickly check what the device says about whether i'm <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I think it still warrants a conversation. Like, they obviously make it easy on the show because he just says, "I'm going to consent to everything right now." But you he does, I mean? in fact, um, they do have a very, very, very brief conversation about it. <laughs> in this case, it's brief because they both clearly want to. But... And I think it's good because it does. Uh, it might not have been a perfect portrayal on the show, but at least it did bring up something that's very clearly an issue in our society right now, which yeah, is... Yeah, I agree with that. I'm glad I brought up. ...consent, yeah. and so I do feel like perhaps that is the next step in a society where we need to use the biometrics on our phone to sign that's waivers really with each other. That yeah. way... And, and I mean, if that's what we've come to, I think that's sad but as a species, but it might be worth it because that way no away. one... Well, yeah, no, but no, no attacker could ever stand in court and go, well, she wanted it, you know, Right. or he that wanted point, it, I guess that is a good point because you can look back and go, no, she did not And I think that the, you know, as the technology grows clearly, like in this world of black mirror, they know because they have coach, you know, so they know it's like actually those entities giving the consent. You can't drug right. somebody and then forge their consent in any way. And so I feel like there will also be a way to, um, you know, your phone will make sure that you are conscious and of your own volition. Like, yeah. I mean, my phone can already read my heart rate. It can measure right. my stress level. It can measure my pulse ox. Like, it could know if I'm under deep, deep stress while I'm signing this thing. So I feel like, you know, perhaps we are moving in that direction. Perhaps it is, um, like my husband always says, locks only keep honest people honest. Right. And you can't totally erase criminal element. But I do think that there are a certain amount of, uh, of sexual abuse that happens where it's not necessarily a serial rapist, but it is someone who didn't care about getting consent. Yeah. Or didn't didn't right. care that they were hurting someone yeah. in the moment or whatever the excuse is. I don't think that's indicative of a, a born sexual criminal right. all the time. But and in the heat have things some gray happen. area things, you know. Yeah, in the heat things happen and, when you're and people lose judgment. things happen. I was just yeah, gonna say alcohol yeah. and drugs can totally mess up judgment, you know. You know, that doesn't excuse it. That doesn't excuse you know, it. But. I pressured my husband into having sex when he's not really in the mood. <laughs> that's, that's not right of me, though. Do you know what I mean? I don't know right. how badly that's hurting him. And to do it to someone who I'm not engaged in a really open relationship with, you know, and, an, and a very intimate friendship with, could be detrimental to that person. Women can be attackers like men can. And so I think it's important for women to also make sure that they're getting consent you know yeah, people definitely. don't talk about it but it does happen yeah and it happens a lot more often than we want to admit or acknowledge yeah yeah i was thinking about this when i was mentioning of 
is during like the montage of Amy's relationships. So Frank's with the same girl for a year, but then Amy goes through, I don't know, like 10 separate relationships of very small two days, one day relationships. Hours, yeah. And they have one where she's hooked up with a girl. And I was thinking, um, does the system like differentiate based on a person's sexuality? Like, they Presumably, right? Like if you, men and if, men if I was, I, hope, I would hope. But. I was almost a little offended by that, actually, um, uh, because, well, that like, well, what Glenn is saying, like, does it acknowledge her own desire, or does it just dare to throw a woman at her? Like, would it have thrown a man at? Ah, oh, fuck, I can't remember Frank. the other guy's name. Friend. I mean, to me, to me, it felt like this was kind of supposed to to replicate a dating experience someone might conceiv- conceivably have, and there are people who. Right. So first of all, first of all, attraction is isn't isn't necessarily as straightforward. Like some people are are bisexual right. and identify and I and are more attracted to men than to women, or the other way around. Right. So like, it's not necessarily you can be bisexual and it doesn't have to be fifty fifty. Um, oh, I'm not offended by that. I'm offended yeah. as a straight woman. Mm. People, they will like guffaw over the fact that I have no desire toward women whatsoever. I would, I would assume and they I don't believe yeah. it, and they, you know, it's right. uh, you don't like women. Well, you love my tits, don't you? No, I don't I'm fucking gonna... like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. It's I mean, so gross. <laughs> I, I, I am not a child. Funny and awful at the same time, yes. I can appreciate that you are a good-looking woman, but I do not want to have anything to do with you in that way. You're gross. Yuck. No. <laughs> I mean, I would I would what? assume the system would take that into, into account. To me, it felt more like it was sort of, it was sort of supposed to replicate the 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 way some some women in that situation might might feel like experimenting if they've been if they've had like a series of one night stands or very short relationships and they might just end up also exper- ex- uh, experimenting with another woman i don't i, just, I, I don't I, know if she's bi or if it's just right, we but that's that. kind of what triggered me is like it's so okay for society to to think that way like i don't know it's it seems, it seems like it's fine to be gay and it's fine to be bi, but it's not okay to be a completely heterosexual woman. You must want to get down with a chick at yeah. some point. And then it's going to be better. every fucking thing you see. But mm-hmm. Hannah, something to consider. This never happened, remember? So when we talk about, we have, we, we, we have to remember when we talk about this to talk about it on two levels. There's what happened in the story and in this world, right? But that happened to fictional characters that don't exist. That happened to computer programs. Then no, there's... I, I, what happens in the then there's outside of that you know the real these two people and what Mm -hmm. they're going to experience but none of that has anything to do with this so we do have to remember that everything in this world including the consent and all that stuff we talk about didn't actually happen because and i think i think an interesting aspect of that is is also the way the show did it if Mm -hmm. if they had established more of her being curious or something it wouldn't have bothered me it's just the flippant way they threw it in and then the fact that it's the last one they show and like like right. they had to slip it in and i, d- I don't know it just it no, was okay, disappointing okay. do you know what i mean it just felt like gratuitous at that point yeah i guess i feel that's like if, if there'd been like a couple of women i might have been I, I, that's true exactly. if there'd that, been like a couple of women yeah. i would have been more if comfortable it had been more guess, mixed up on her end yeah. or here's you know, the thing back profile Here's the thing. The question is, how much does, I mean, how much does the computer program know what you want and how much does it hook you up with people to find out what you want? Because, I mean, realistically, clearly, you know, our our guy here, Frank, is it, you know, is not at all compatible with the other woman he meets right after her. Like, clearly, there's nothing about their compatibility at all. So however it puts it together, right? right. However they put her together, clearly this wasn't, like, it knows what he wants, and, you know, like, because it, it did badly there. And so so that, you gotta, that was the... That, was that it's kind of guessing. So the question is, in a situation, 
how much does it actually know before it pairs people up? Or is it deliberately putting people with people they aren't going to be happy with to learn? Because remember, they would ask, why did you do this? We have our reasons. You know, there, there's always a, a re I forget the exact wording they use, but, you know, that's like there's always a good reason for it. So it might even be in the situation that, you know, they put her with her to see if she'd be disgusted or, you know, maybe she'll be interested or who knows, you know. And then what do you do with the situation of a closet case who hasn't even admitted to themselves? I mean, there's so many people in our world today who don't know that they're gay or bi and I think it also you know, raises the interest it also raises the question um like if if you sign up on OkCupid today you can right. see a match percentage with like en with anyone on there right you you can you can set your preferences to only show you men or women but but if you sw like if you look at anyone's profile it's going to show you a match percentage does that mean that the system runs simulations for for everyone of every gender all the time anyway like does that mean for every for every pair of two straight right. women on this dating app, that's going to be a thousand simulations. Right. I don't know. But that's that's what I'm saying too. Is like the fact that we're never shown him being paired with a man for any reason. Again, well, there's no explanation for why she's paired with a chip chick. And and then the other yeah. element of it that kind of bothered me was that he, he's only ever given her, and then the other woman who obviously he's not compatible with and she is not interested in him then they have to spend a year together fine whatever but then they show her having all these other sexual encounters and that's all it is and um it just seemed really one-sided like not i don't think it was um it's funny because on the one hand it's like are they kind of saying that she's more promiscuous than him and then on the other hand it's good because it is okay for a woman to be promiscuous like right. any hetero man would be. That's fine, too. And there's no shame in that if she wants to have a lot of sexual encounters. I, I think fine, it's important. But it kind of rigged the system for her that way. Right. I think we have to remember, though, that we're talking about, you know, a 45-minute story where we can't get every permutation of everything. Yeah, and true. they're trying to show a few representations. You know, is this always what happens? Maybe that's just how who she is as a person. And they were trying to be sex positive. Maybe, you know. And that's okay. We, and, and we don't. And the thing I think we do have to remember is that we don't understand this algorithm. And let's also remember this <laughs> algorithm doesn't really exist. You know, theoretically, you know, we could argue that they're hooking up millions of people you know, in just this one simulation, you know, because presumably, you know, we see other, we see another couple who oh, yeah, found that's, their perfect that's match. That's the other thing I want to know. So I know if none of that actually exists, you know, unless somehow they're all like simulating each other. I mean, we don't know how it works. Are there separate algorithms for each couple? That's kind of the sense I got from it at the end when they start to break free right. because nobody right. first, there, everyone right. loses it, their autonomy. Right. At first I thought maybe we're happens. all in this world, but I, I feel like that's not the case, in which case every other person we see in this, in this thing is irrelevant, really. Realistically, I mean, her relationship I mean, based with, on a real consciousness, but they're clearly not right, like right. active in their simulation. Right. And we don't know, you know, what we also don't understand. We kind of we even in the world itself, if we let's say let's say the ending didn't happen and it ended with them like jumping over a wall and running into the wilderness together or whatever. Like we still don't know what the algorithm was. We don't know the purpose of anything it did. We they tell us that it's for the best and that, you know, just trust us. But for all we know, it could be deliberately trying to turn her into a whore. You know, what I mean, we, you know, we have no idea what the, you know, what the actual algorithm is. So it's hard for us to judge anything based on, you know, ultimately a very small sampling. We saw what, like 10 dates total, you know, could have been anything. And and obviously in an hour story you can't get that detailed and and that's fine you know but we, yeah, and we could just be as much as we where, where it's know, reverse we, and like he sleeps around as much and she only has one one other partner right. we don't right. know how the right I mean you no know, we're Vok we want all the details we want all the little I mean you know we spend you know three hours talking about two chapters of a book. But, I have no idea how badly I just want to know how the algorithm works. <laughs> I know, no, me too. I'm totally, I'm saying that's how we're kind of hardwired. You know, we're hardwired to want these details. Your average viewer doesn't want these details. And in fact, if they gave these details, would tune it out. Like if this was a two hour episode instead of a one hour, you'd lose half the audience halfway <laughs> through it when they gave us the stuff that like the us that we want to see. You know? uh, well, I think that different things do happen each simulation just based on the fact that it's different like they're 
both wearing right. different clothes by then. So some right. there are and one and a half percent. Changes. And one and a half percent of the time they don't run away. So yeah. <laughs> Point two percent of a right, right, one point two, whatever it was, yeah, <laughs> or point two, yeah, yeah, but, but you know like, what I mean. But also, but, we like, don't know. We but don't if know. you if you use these kind of resources for 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 dating in the first place, which is comparatively, like I mean, currently we could probably allocate, we could probably have better dating algorithms if if we allocated more resources to it, but we just don't right. bother because we don't see this as one of the big issues in society right now. Like, we could we could allocate more computational resources to it. Um, right. And I guess if if you're already if this is computationally expensive in that world, then mm -hmm. they probably wouldn't do it in the first place. I think they'd probably only do it if it's feasible to do it for a large amount of people, and then you might as well do it for everyone. And maybe there's not much point in doing pre-processing, even though I feel very sorry for the for the whole simulation clones well, of people with like well, a 10% like math. I'm not sure. I agree. I feel like it's probably got to be expensive. It's got to be super expensive and resource hungry. And you probably only want to do it when there's a good reason to, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, it's like healthcare. If you already know that people are matched fairly well, then, then why would you, but like, I don't really care if I've got a 95 or 97% match percentage with someone. Right. But there's a big difference between 75 and 95 or, you know. <laughs> yeah. I guess that depends on how good your pre-processing is, right? I right, don't know. Right. I don't know. I mean, just like in the like Japan, Russia. Think about how... In the how life, Japan, Russia, and South Korea all um, think it's quite a big problem. Maybe there's, maybe there's pre-processing that just simulates a first date between everyone. Because right. if you think about it, I mean, no, think about how just this one incident, how much processing power this would have to use. It would take the two of them through, I mean, it was, what, a year or two? You know? Oh, yeah. Well, that's got to be a lot of processing power just for like you and me. Let's see how we work the first time. Never mind the if, if we got a 99.8 or whatever it is, then they obviously ran this several hundred, if not thousand, if not million times. A you thousand know, times, so, right? They're doing a thousand simulations. But if you're bothering to do that, then it can't be that insanely expensive. Otherwise, or it could be it. that we only, or it could be something, say, only the rich get or something that could only. Be. That is true. Only. Maybe you only get to do this three times in your life, you know, and, and you're going to use it now or that's it. You know, like, like, I like you so much. Let's see if it works or or I think I'm you're hot. So let me check you <laughs> or whatever, you, you think, know. Do you think people are aware of how the algorithm works in the same way that we know how OkCupid okay matches people, for example? I do. That's know. what I, I was thinking. Kind of the same sort of idea as um, what if video games are real, that sort of thing. You don't really know what's going on. Oh my god, Jock, I was anything. just about to say Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> like, yeah. It reminds me of that a little, yeah. What if your yeah, toys come right. to life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um I uh I was thinking it's also probably given that they are meeting physically together, it, there has to be some sort of like when you go for a job search online, you know, you narrow it down. If you're not willing to relocate it, mm -hmm. you narrow your search within 50 miles or whatever but if you are willing to relocate then you go a thousand miles right, right so i i'm sure there's got to be some sort of proximity that weeds down the potential or, matches to begin with like or you could decide but, how important looks are or like i only want blonde guys or you know bald women or you know whatever it is you're into you know yeah. <laughs> you could narrow yeah. it you know, you could be like, look, I, I really want to end up with someone who's tall. So, you know, I wonder, though, because of like the the success rate is based on the simulations. But if they're advertising it as successful, so is the public aware that your your consciousness will be inverted into this simulation based on that the success rate of however many simulations is how we'll match you. So trust that when you start dating or just, we have a 98% sex success rate. They don't tell you why. Right. But then you, you just sign trust your life it away. Anyway. You just sign your life away. Right. Like, Who knows? Yeah. It's, we can't really know. And we, it's probably this is why this show is great though, because we could right. spend this amount of time on every episode. Right. We it should. raises so many important <laughs> questions and we should, okay. I, I agree. Uh, I think we should do a full-blown series of these. I love it. I'd be so up for it. Well, I probably need to the watch more. The near black watch the, the black mother of the U.S. 
Yeah, I, I agree. And David, now go ahead and watch the very first episode and then check back in with us. Well, here's a question. So my <laughs> a friend and I are probably going to watch it tonight, maybe, because we get together and, and we can never agree on anything. And I'm hoping from all that you've said, it gets bleak that maybe he he may not like that. But I'm trying to always try to find he, he likes like light rom-coms and like gay, silly stories. And I don't, like don't watch you know, the serious first art. Yeah, don't, don't, don't watch, watch the, the first, first episode, episode with someone if you else. want to get someone. I think I think the first episode, first season, is not a good introductory episode. Okay. I think this one, for example, is a good introductory episode to right. the to the show overall because it gives and you it, kind of a good idea of what Black Mirror is, how it works. You kind of except get a that I just if I hadn't just watched it. I, you know, if I, I yeah, want to watch yeah, a new yeah. one. So. Yeah, no, of course. Um, <laughs> is, is the would, Samson Jinapero one a good one for that? Or I would watch, I would watch say the season first, one episode two. I yeah. would say season, season the three one, episode two. one. What is, what is that? That's the one with the bikes. 15 and the million mirrors. mirrors. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that will work. Um, you will probably would... enjoy that one, but the first one, season one, episode one, I wouldn't watch with anyone else. Not a good introductory it's episode. Don't watch Very that uncomfortable. Watch anything else. Yeah, okay. that's also, also not very representative of Black Mirror. I'm not, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't know. I, um, I watched them all in order, and... I can tell you I only watched the second episode because I didn't I didn't know that it was um, standalones. I didn't realize that when I watched it. Oh and I just gosh. wanted to see how the fuck they're going to continue a show. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so okay, out of I can... curiosity, I started the second episode. And about 15 minutes into it, I realized oh. <laughs> I didn't have to do with the other one. And I closed Nothing. it out and looked it up. And it was like, oh, well, oh, it's like Twilight Zone. OK. And right. then I kept Although, watching. And I was, do these happen in the same world or no? Because no. I, I read that somewhere. There are theories you know, about it. But I don't okay. think I feel like not in the same universe. Not necessarily. Like, Possibly, but... I think some of them definitely not. Like, some of them seem like they would exclude each other. I think some could fit. Yes, but you do see of... technology in some of the episodes repeat in future mm -hmm. episodes, which indicates that it's the same universe. But not necessarily. Yeah, like, there are the same company. Right. You don't, there, no, there aren't ones you have to have watched another one first to really get. No, it, right? no. you can watch any, any individually. Um, I would, the, the one, I mean, the first one I ever watched was season three, episode one. And I think that's a good introductory episode. I think that's not too, not too dark. Oh my God, that one is so dark to me. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we have such different opinions. It, that's, that's Nosedive, right? The one where. The one with the votes. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That to me was the most like heartbreaking. It almost what put me it? off the series. Because <laughs> it got me into that's it. it got me into the first, that's the first one that Netflix, when Netflix took it over. So it was the first two seasons are done by a British production company. And then they were done with it and Netflix bought it and picked it up and put it back on. So it's, that's where the first like, um, oh, the American stuff comes in and, I just thought that one was so depressing. Yeah. And it is and it, and not it, in a brutal way. I think some change. some of the others are much more gruesome. I think this is like <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a good introductory episode. Okay. Um, honestly, like season three to me was just harder, like it's really like my favorite one is the one with the VR and I think that's incredibly rough. San Junipero? No, the the other one. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the horror game. The, there's more than one VR episode. The one with the horror game. That was dark too. That really freaked me out. The, there's freaked. nothing like the first episode of season one though. Is oh, I love so, that. Is a... watched it so many times. Really? Why would you do that? To me? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I watched the. I watched Some the, people the, like all dark. Of the third I watched all of it's not that it's dark it's just as so I watched all of the third season and then and then I watched the first episode of the first season and I was like two minutes into it and I was like oh this is what did Netflix do this is not this is not this is not the same show is it what's happening and I was really confused and I had to see that's like, how I felt when watching season three I was like this is really? uh, it's different yeah but, well because you you okay. started on where it changed right okay but I didn't feel like going back like the rest of season one and season two kind of works for me. It's really just that episode that doesn't fit in for me, having come from season three first. Yeah, yeah. that one is like, it's it's brutal, David. Like, it's, mm -hmm. the theme of that is extra. 
I love yeah. how like, she puts For me, story. I'll probably really like it. It's just a matter of will he. I yeah. I think you should watch it alone. It's because okay. it it goes into some really uncomfortable themes. And I personally, it's not one like, hey kids, let's watch, let's sit around the TV and watch Black Mirror. You know. Have you watched any with your kids? Uh, me? Oh God, yeah. no. Okay. I, don't fuck. Know. I feel oh, like that's God. something that you probably could. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No. He well, he's only know. ten. Yeah. All right. Okay. I would totally watch the nosedive one with my kids. <laughs> oh no, no. I, I'm he, saying he's um, not having any kids, but he's only ten, and I barely let. I just let him. The day my children sign up on Facebook, I will sit them down <laughs> and make yeah. them watch this episode with me. <laughs> he, like, uh, well, okay, for like the first five years of his life, we wouldn't even let him watch Looney Tunes because of the slapstick stuff. Right. We didn't want to um, have him see that violence is funny in any way. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then as he got older, we started letting him expand that. But we don't let him watch anything that has any sort of sexuality. And he's at 10. He's not interested in it. Like when people kiss, he's like, ew, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I barely just because he, he would like come over my shoulder while I was watching Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. And he um, was like, oh, what is this? So he got a I'm tab for Christmas. And I told yeah. him he could watch stranger things if he wanted to because i don't feel like it's that bad really um, yeah, i can't watch that. i'm not old enough for this <laughs> well, I mean, like, it's scary i guess but i don't yeah. think that it had a lot of like uh i guess some of season two is but but he's like he then he said to me he wasn't ready for that do you right. know what i mean that's how i feel for about him. stranger things <laughs> he, he's got a pretty good meter on what he that's really good. Is you know gonna watch and stuff like we have we pay for premium satellite TV so HBO and stuff is on there. He could flip to it any time, but mm. I, I've never like walked in and caught him watching something he shouldn't because he knows what is appropriate and what is not. And he's just not interested really in things yeah. that aren't age appropriate and and those kind of things make him uncomfortable. So he'll t- he'll he'll turn away. You know that's good. On his- I did that for the longest time, and then I went through this phase of staying up till like two a.m. and watching horror movies that were not age appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> but like till I was like twelve or so, I was doing really well, and I was always like leaving or turning off when then something came on that I wasn't ready to watch. And if he's um, not I, I sure, what changed. Now, he'll go, can I watch this? And we'll look yeah. at it and go, no, oh, you know, better not. Or that's really or, good. Or yeah, I don't think you'll like it. You know. Mm. So um, yeah, he's he's a really good kid, honestly. Yeah. He, that's we don't really have to worry about him a lot with stuff like that. Um, it's like cool. now we let him do the violence a little bit, like, mm. but still with the sexual themes, we kind of keep that. I mean, I grew up on Grimm's fairy tales, so like violence is not not a big deal. <laughs> we we just didn't want, as a young, a very young child, like a toddler, for him to sure. think that violence was entertaining or funny, you know. Even though it is just cartoons and it's slapstick yeah, no, and that, no makes one sense. Does. that makes sense. We didn't want our kid running around hitting people. He was never going to be that. Mm. You know. I and don't know. Never... My mom read Grimm's fairy tales to me, so I think it's normal to roll down people, roll people <laughs> down a hill in a barrel that has nails on the inside. <laughs> Six <Crash> <laughs> um, This is my childhood. Anyway. Um, I wanted to. I've got like one more random comment that I couldn't fit in about the episode. I feel like five years is a shitty amount of time to be together. I, do, I would not want a relationship to last five years. I feel like oh. less is okay. No. Because <laughs> you don't... I feel like less is, is, is all right because you don't waste that much time on a person that you don't ultimately end up with. And I feel like more, if it's like a long-term relationship, even if it doesn't eventually work out, there's some value to that as well. But I feel like between like two and five years just seems like a really shitty period of time to me. And when it, when it was decreased, I was like, oh, that's quite lucky. I'd rather have two weeks than five years I think five years as it's like if I if I knew my current relationship was going to last five years I'd be like mm, no oh no I know about oh I just sort of wondered how it would work so they both decide okay we won't look but then they will have an expiration date anyway so how would that work if they don't know what it is? Yeah, I was wondering, does their house just randomly lock them out one day? And they're like, ah, <laughs> oh, I guess that's it. I was wondering about that. I thought that was a very... <laughs> but I guess, I mean, maybe that's part it of did. the... Maybe it doesn't matter, because it's... Maybe if they choose to stay together, 
despite the expiration date. Maybe that counts as a success metric. Oh, yeah. Maybe you don't have well, to run away. Well, that's what we know, just... like, in the end, right? That The only I mean, way we... to stay together is to run away because, you know, right. they, sick, they sick the goonies on you there, you know? <laughs> the goonies, the, they're goons on you, you know? But maybe, um, maybe, maybe one the... way to... Maybe one way to succeed is to just say, ah, oh, well, we have an expiration date, but we won't look at it and we won't respect it and we'll just stay together. Maybe that's like a more peaceful way of, of, of winning. This right. I was actually surprised that the I was actually surprised that the algorithm or that the application or whatever even allowed that. I was surprised that like after like, you know, a couple of minutes, it said you have to push this now or we'll kill you or something you know? or we'll sick the goons <laughs> on, you You know, we'll sick the goons. <laughs> Like, I was totally surprised that that was even an option. Let's not push this. Like, Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like she gets all upset at him for looking, and I'm like, honestly, though... I think that's fair, because they he, agreed not to look, right? It's more, right. It's but it's if more he about didn't the betrayal look, of trust. Like, if he didn't look, they'd never get the chance to... It just It seemed odd, because it's like... They... Okay, so they're version of their consciousness doesn't seem to know how it all works yeah. right. so they don't they don't seem to know that it'll pre-warn you when you've got your perfect match yeah. so maybe he's sitting there going like is this the perfect match so like from her and she just doesn't want to know and let it be organic but from his end he's like i need to know because how is it we can we can invest five years into this and then nothing. Like, I don't think that's why he looks. I think he wants to know, like, am I going to have a day with her or, a, or 20 years? Like, I think that's more what he wants to know than if because I think it would have told them because remember, I mean, maybe we don't know what they know and what they don't know. So, you know, presumably they know that they know that they'll know when they get a perfect match. That's what I so, thought. I was under the impression they knew this wasn't their final match. Right. So they're like, you know what? I don't want this to end, so I'm not going to push it. And the moment I push it, I know exactly when it's going to end, and I don't want to know that. I guess I just the thing I was wondering live. before I before I was sure that this was a simulation or like wasn't that this wasn't actually happening in one way or another. I guess I wasn't sure if because technically every relationship expires at some point, right? Because someone right. dies. I was wondering if it if it just shows if it could potentially show you the 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 the, the death as in like the time you have till one of you dies. Alternatively. Um, but I get. I mean, I guess now that we know it's a simulation, I don't suppose it does. Happen. That's the other thing with the simulation and their percentage rate, Tanya. That that raises a good question. Like, they don't seem to be put through any of the other things that do test a relationship in real life, like financial difficulties, unexpected pregnancies, job <laughs> issues. I feel you know? like that would be I so mean, much better if they had like a system that simulates what happens. We we run you. Through these ten difficult well, relationship scenarios, do you stay together if you if you get pregnant? Yeah, I mean, the, let's remember though that on a resort together. Right, like, let's remember. Well, maybe this is another. Let's, maybe let's remember that this is only one scenario we've seen. As I much mean, as yeah, we think, as much as we think we've seen a whole bunch because we saw them with other couples. I mean, pretty much all of like, for instance, all of his time with her, with the with the other, with the with the horrible woman, it, it is irrelevant because that wasn't what the simulation was about. And all of her time with yeah. her little fuck boys is is irrelevant because that wasn't what we were trying to find out. We were trying yeah, to find boy, out yeah. if fuck fuck with them wanted to be together, right? You know, like. All of that time is is irrelevant because this is only one. We actually only saw one scenario. We saw what happens if these two get paired up, but only for a day. Like that's all we've seen. So there could be, for all we know, there could be a what happens if you get together and there's a flood and you're and you're sure, stuck on, a, on an abandoned island somewhere. You know, I mean, there could be billions of then different doesn't scenarios. That change like doesn't that add more variables that then change? Maybe the outcome is like ninety nine point eight percent of the time. Came together. I mean, for all we know, the last one was like, "What happens if we have a kid together and he dies?" You know, I mean, we have no idea what those other ninety nine point eight percent were. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah, have like, a thousand remarkably different that. scenarios, and if you, if you, I feel like it's still representative if you put every potential pairing through the same thousand scenarios. Like every pairing has one scenario where they get pregnant unexpectedly or whatever. Right. Right. I except, feel like that would still work. Except for the gay ones. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> 
Although I guess you could unexpectedly get pregnant with someone else when you cheated. <laughs> I mean, that's a different oh. issue, I guess, right? Have you seen Jane right. the Virgin? No. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Like, Are she you gets, familiar with the concept? I've never seen it, but I'm familiar with the concept. Artificially inseminated with someone else. Uh, like, on accident. So, like, she gets pregnant but with someone else without cheating, so I guess... That could happen. Yeah, and it's because isn't it because like the doctor makes a mistake when she yeah, goes yeah. in for the Mix up, exam? Yeah. This is in the first episode. This is not a spoiler. <laughs> Everyone should go watch this. Best. We watched this after Black Mirror because it was more wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I so, love okay. that. I love the idea that an art, art, like unintentionally pregnancy is is more wholesome than this. <laughs> oh, it's a very wholesome show. I love it. It makes me really happy. It's great. Everyone should watch it. We should be okay about yeah, it. Yeah, it's E4, as Matt. What was that? It's Z4, isn't that Jane the Virgin? It's what? I think On it is, E4. I've never watched it. I'm guessing it's Netflix, is, right? yeah, is that right? It is, yeah. yeah. So I can't watch In it. In the UK, so it's on I, E4. I had to get oh, my boyfriend E4, into it so I can watch it. <laughs> You're talking so, about teach. um... Feel free to edit this out, Glenn, because I'm going to kind of put you and David on blast, but... Uh-oh. uh <laughs> Uh, from your perspective and your sexuality, would you have rather seen this episode be with a same-sex couple? Oh, I would love it, yeah. It would be nice, but, I mean, I thought it worked as it was, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, cared, if I'm not I cared about these characters either way, and I really wanted them to get away together, so it worked as it was. I mean, it's always good to see more LGBT, LGBT re- representation, but mm-hmm. in this case, I thought it worked fine as it was. Yeah, I can get into romance between the straight couples. Right. I mean, that's where I think, you know, where I know you were upset that they showed her with a girl, though. I think that's good, because at least to show that that's part of the algorithm was nice. I mean, maybe even if yeah. it had been... Just a gay couple in the background at the wedding would have been yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, at some point I was a bit annoyed about about how straight it was. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> don't. Yeah, I don't feel like it was a um, a, a good representation. That's kind of what annoyed me. It it seemed like the stereotypical representation. It, it's like we don't know how she really felt about it. So. Yeah, that's because <laughs> we and, and we I don't feel like there's enough bi characters. Second, we got. There's I mean, it almost. It almost struck me as tokenism in that it was like we get it yeah. for a second, that's it, you know. I, I barely, I barely yeah. even noticed it, you know. That's yeah. what I mean. So it, to me, it felt, um, yeah, it felt, it, it still felt like an underrepresentation. And right. I mean, to be honest with you guys, I have a hard time getting too invested in like same-sex couples on screen, but it, it's not like it bothers me. It's just I don't have anything to really. Um, like connect with do you know what i mean like it doesn't strike chords with me because i'm not i think when you're gay you you have to like i mean because you know for instance up until you know five ten years ago if i if i couldn't if i couldn't relate to a straight couple in a in a movie i couldn't watch anything because that's <laughs> pretty much all there was you know so you kind of i think when you grow up lgbt you know that like you're not going to see a lot of this stuff so you kind of have to invest yourself in in things that are different than you which but is I mean, fine. Also, I've, I've never had any not, trouble. Are you like, conditioned to enjoy right. these things? Right. But I mean, I, I don't. We, we don't see enough of that. But I've never had trouble. Right. Like empathizing with with like a couple of gay men if I saw them on TV. Like I can empathize with that relationship, even though it's got nothing to do with myself or my preferences. Right. And I, I think can't. Just, but it doesn't play into my own vanity, is what I mean. Do you know I what think I mean? Part of the problem, Hannah, is I think that when you're in a world where you see so little of, of the other that you, you consider it so other I can't relate to it in the sense that, like, I think b- being gay and being Jewish, although I was, I'm not really, but I was, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not religious, but I'm, you know, was brought up that way, and being a nerd and all this stuff, I've understood that, like, there are lots of ways in which I'm different from people, so this is just one of them. So, for, like, to say that, like, okay, so a straight couple is different from me. Well, they are, but so is, you know, a, a black couple in America and what they go through, or an interracial couple, or, you know, or, or a jock and a, and, a, and a cheerleader. Like, that's totally different from my experience. Or, yeah. you know, every, every single, your relationship is completely different from mine. Jock's relationship is completely different from mine. Every relationship on the planet is different. And when we understand that, we can find our similarities better, I think, you know? 
I mean, like, I want to be clear that it, I'm not offended when no, I, I see things yeah, like that. It's about me being it's able to clear. connect in the same way or or um, live vicariously through through those characters in that fantasy type of I, I mentality think that how, how watch I, stuff like that brings to you. You know what I mean? Hannah, outside of, outside of like, romance-related plots, how do you feel about empathizing with, like, male main characters? Uh, that's very easy for me to do. And I, I think that's part of the thing is that we, probably we, easier that than female when I'm like reading something. ourselves to like think of certain things as more other than other things. And I think on some level, you kind of get to understand with time that we're all other and we're all the same. And, and I think that's that's when you can kind of start to that's that's when you get a better world when we all understand that we all have our differences and similarities. And we just have to figure out what those are and try to relate with each other on the things that we're similar in. You know, we. You know, you and I are very different people. We have different politics. We have different things. Very different, yeah. But we can come together on a love for Vok and a love for Game of Thrones and, well, sometimes, and, <laughs> and this episode and whatever. And, and, and that is more of a similarity than I may have with the gay guy next door. Yeah. Right. And, and that's the thing, I think, is where we come to when we get to world is that, you know, you find the things that bring you together with people. And you don't focus on the things that tear you apart or make you different, you know? I mean, it may be, there may be a guy my age, my, my life experience or whatever, who's gay and white and Jewish and adopted and all the other things in life I am and liberal who I couldn't have a good conversation with because like, like you and I can over, over Vok, you know? Yeah. You just got to find those things that bring people together, I think. So then my other question is, um, I guess it's kind of why the whole thing with her being with a woman bothered me is that if, if there is like representation of same sex couples in media, I personally, I'm not going to say connect with, but I would rather see male same sex couples than female is that's that probably, weird? Like, why, why do you think that is? Probably because well, you like guys, so you can imagine liking I do, a girl. I, I do <laughs> like guys. I can't imagine liking a girl. Right. Uh, I and I also feel like it is more. It's still the most underrepresented. I mean, even really? on something like Orange Is the New Black, which shows a lot. Of, you know, it has a lot of representation for the LGBTQ community. I still feel like the male same sex couple representation is very lacking. Be and again, it's because of that societal thing with hetero men. Like, yeah, I love to watch girl on girl. Right. There's truth. To that. But I don't but know if I necessarily agree with that. Because I, that's the thing, because I do feel like a lot of the, a lot of the, the female same sex relationships we see are very much through a male gaze. And if you, yep, for example, absolutely. look at a song of ice and fire, we do right. have, like right. with, with Renly Absolutely. and Doris, we do have a genuine gay, like we've got gay men who are in a genuine loving relationship as far as we can oh, tell. Well, if, um, if you but, read between the lines, you have to read between the lines. Yeah, yeah sure. But, 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 but meanwhile, we see Cersei and Danny getting it on with their maids. Yeah, maids, but, that's, you know? but that's purely sexual, right? That doesn't Clearly. seem to be any kind of... Kind of right. I that's agree. That's I mean, that doesn't seem to be any genuine affection there on that level. And I feel like that's the same in, in a lot of media. And I feel like... Mm -hmm. It's quite it's rare to see relationships between. I get the impression I've seen more relationships between between men on screen than between women agree. that I feel like for, for their own sake. And yeah, not just I don't know, know there's a lot of invisibility out there. I think I think there's yeah, a lot of invisibility. Period. There's a lot of it. Period, and I think you just have to. You know, I don't think it's a contest. You know? No, no, and I, and both are underrepresented. I mean, this is yeah. like. Pretty like anyone on that show. I don't know why I watch watching it. Medicine, honestly, like that's the only just, part that interests me. I stopped watching it for years because it did get so ridiculous, like with the whole Denny. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's and I didn't watch it until like Netflix had it on, and I'm like, okay, I'll spend one weekend watching all of it, but I'm not going to be married to it for my life. This is, one show, this is the one show I keep up with religiously. So <laughs> we should do. We should do. Yeah, let's episode. do a cast on it. Yeah, I'm done. Hey. Um, I mean, we've talked about this on like every episode we've been on together. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us are sitting here like, what? Would you use the stating app? 
that has okay. There's two algorithm. apps we're talking about. There's the actual, like, no. there's the in the world app, the app that they have in the world, and then yeah, there's so, the what they really ended up being. So let's go around and give our answers answers for both of those. No David, one no. You, huh? hmm? Yes, and yes. No two either. Ninety nine point eight percent success. I would take that. I mean, you don't know. The other thing we don't know is the data on how well this actually, like how well the algorithm exactly. actually performs, right? You'd have it's to match that against thirty seconds in the real world. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't know how reliably this actually maps to people staying together in the real world. So we don't right. actually know how good the like how mm -hmm. useful for the algorithm. For every person you do on it, and for every person you do on it, you're basically torturing one thousand other people. If you think the simulations are people you're torturing. Right, which is obviously um, the question, but. Yeah, I mean, the simulation is. So, so we don't. So we don't know how well. Are you. <laughs> They're really you, though. So you're torturing yourself. <laughs> so yeah, so we don't know how well this performs, and we and we don't know. Um, uh, that makes it hard to answer the question. Like I, I would have to me, say, again, I'd have to I'd have to know whether there's other success metrics or whether running away together is the only thing because I don't see myself doing that. <laughs> so I, I don't know. If in the world. I the idea of hey I can get matched up with whatever check it out see how it works and learn about me through that and, and that I like the only yeah. part of that I don't like is the you know the forced end date like yeah. Yeah. either forced to leave or being stuck with someone I don't want to have like that part's horrible to me mm -hmm. but you know if, if it was a little more flexible and we could like go no I want to stay together at the end of our time or we could go eh, let's end this now you know when you're I'd stuck be okay with, with the having to end it. I wouldn't be okay with the having to stay in the relationship. I, 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 I actually forced it. I feel like the. I mean, I guess. I guess <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm older and I'm a romantic now. I feel almost the opposite. I feel like it would be awful to be stuck with someone horrible for a while. But at least that's going to end. If I yeah, know, I know. I love this person and I want to be with them, if I can't ever be with them again, that that to me is much worse of an end. Well, I'd be. I'd. i do, I've been stuck in a horrible relationship. I'd rather. I'd rather lose someone I really want to be with than spend five years stuck in a horrible relationship that I can't leave. It may also be our different ages. Now I'm getting older, so the idea of like the right one could come along and I could lose it is, is, is scarier to me than the idea of being stuck with someone I don't like. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather die alone than spend right. five years stuck with my ex. I'll, I'll say this though, it's easier to say that when you're young than when you're old. <laughs> I mean, I, I see your point and I also, I mean, I feel like I mean, this is why I feel like five years is, is also in general a shitty time to be to be with anyone, right? Because I feel like if I, knew, if I knew I was going to be with my current boyfriend for five years, I'd just break up now because I wouldn't want to waste that time during which I could potentially meet someone else. Which is true. But, like, I, I'm, the part for me that makes it not so bad is the fact that we know there is an end date. Like, as opposed to, I'm going to, you know, say, let's say you, you know, let's say, okay. you know, you and I got together and we weren't really working it out, maybe because I'm gay, but, you know, <laughs> that would be an issue, have a baby <laughs> and we have a kid, you know, then it becomes this, do we stay together for the yeah. kids and now we're stuck together for at least 20 years, you know, like, I think, I mean, people do stay with people they don't want to be with forever. Yeah. That's so, true. At least in this world, we know they can get out of it. It may be, you know, a year down the line. But... Unless yeah. it's your pairing day and you're stuck forever. Right. But then theoretically, the app it already knows perfect. that this is your perfect mate. Oh, so. Yeah. 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 So that shouldn't happen. Unless yeah. You're yeah not that's... Unless, of course, it's wrong. Unless, of course, it's wrong, which is another problem. That's but true. But in the real world app, it's really hard to say because we only saw a few seconds of it. Like, in theory, if it actually is going to run these simulations and figure out who I'll work with and has a 98% success rate, although we don't know that that's an actual success rate, it's only a success rate of the that's, simulation. That's the match rate, right? It's not like success, success rate. For the simulation rate, rate, not the other, real yeah. world. Right. So, but, but you know, I, I, I'd be cool with that, especially since I'm not, I mean, if I was living through the simulation, that might be different because I don't know if I want to sit through a. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to be the simulation. <laughs> you know, but if if you're just going to take my data and my mindset and and put it through a bunch of stuff and then come back and give me an answer, this guy's good for you. That I'm cool with that. <laughs> I would for the real world one. I would say I would say no, unless I knew there was a more sensible success metric than the stupid running away together thing because I don't think that tells you much about. It. Like what's the, the? They don't even know what the other one's opinion on reproductive rights is. Like I don't. This is important. How is this relevant to running away together? <laughs> you can run away with someone who doesn't have the same opinions as you on reproductive rights, and I think that would be a terrible basis for a relationship. Um, 
so I, so for the real one, I would say, like for the real world one that runs the simulations, I would say no. For the one within the in in within the simulation, I don't know. Like the the thought of being stuck in a horrible relationship for five right. years, five years that I can't leave. Maybe I'd rather not right. find my perfect match right. than be stuck in a terrible. But maybe, but if it's if it's mm. time, if it's a, that's not, that one's more difficult. It's that tough. one's more difficult. Maybe yes, maybe because you because because you're right. Like it would it would end. And if right. it was like that level of like what the what the guy and and the other girl have, I think that's like it's not great, but it's tolerable, right? I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, that seemed pretty awful to me. <laughs> what do you, you mean the 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 our yeah, main yeah, yeah, guy? The one right. relationship, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the girl's one didn't seem so bad. I mean, the biggest thing about him is that he did the, you know, <laughs> that, like of but all the things to like. To be bothered by. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it just seems so I mean, bizarre. I guess, I mean, I guess it wasn't really that thing that bothered her. I guess she just didn't like. It. I guess when you don't like someone, you pick up. Right. On, on right. I mean, like if she liked him, it wouldn't bother. I mean, her. clearly she saw him, thought she was hot, and wanted to fuck him, and then realized, oh, well, we have nothing in common, and oh, he does this annoying thing. Yeah, I mean, it bothered thing. her. Like, yeah, it bothered her because she didn't like him. If she'd liked him, right. it would bother right. her. Right. Right. things work, but you, you know, here's something we never saw after that first like week or two. Do you think they were still fucking for the for like that whole nine months or not? Yeah. I feel like they were. Yeah. Although, do you think she got so disgusted? I mean, especially when he's going down on her and he still does the oh, thing yeah. afterwards. I was like, maybe that he, was just creepy. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe he stopped because she said something, right? Maybe he. But but he didn't. We never saw him stop. So. Did we see him? Continue? He still did it. He still was doing it to the end. Oh, I don't. I don't anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's like I don't know. After a guy had done that to you once in the middle of sex, would you would you just have to be like, sorry, I can't let you do this ever again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I think it depends on how good the sex is. I think I could put up it. <laughs> how good he was down there. Yeah. <laughs> if he has ah, afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that was just so creepy could... to me. That one moment, I was just like, like when when he did it after drinking, I was like, that's fine, whatever. But yeah. then when he did it after going down, and I was just like, that's oh, true. Ooh, that's creepy. But if he's like really, I could forgive it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I've never been in that situation. I don't know. I don't know. With that body, I probably could forgive him a lot of things, but... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she, I gotta say, she definitely got, like, some, some kind of hot guys all around. <laughs> yeah, she was doing okay. She was doing okay. I don't yeah. think the main guy was the hottest option, but I also... Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, but clearly it was the best one for her. So maybe that was maybe that's what the lesson was kind of teaching her, although I guess she doesn't actually learn anything from it, is that, you know, <laughs> you know, all the guys it picks for her to fuck are like these like hot guys that like, you know, you'd want to fuck. And maybe he's not the instant let's fuck kind, because I mean they didn't, right? But they got to they got along together and were happier and you know, that's who she really wanted to be with. Yeah, I mean maybe that's um, the test. But... Maybe that's I the happy lesson we can take from this. What is your confession? My confession that I would like to be edited out is that I'm just not going to go to work. Because uh -oh. uh -oh. those people. Okay. Well, I mean, it's yeah. like, it's something like I didn't really have to be at anyway. Although, like, it's basically like the final dress of this um, show we have coming in tomorrow they load in. Mm. And so I was going to go to that, but I really wouldn't have been, like, getting paid for it. So I'm just not going to go because I'd rather go talk to you. And go do your job. Go do your job. I have to go to speak to you, too, because my friend Barry's actually I'm not. My friend Barry's, like, texting me, like, hey, are, are we ready to get together now? And I'm like, I'm still podcasting. Still podcasting. <laughs> Because we said it, it won't go over two hours. I was totally lying. <laughs> if it was like real work, obviously I would go, but it's not even like real. I think you but should go. Him, we together, we're going to be talking for hours, no matter what, right? That is true. You'll be <laughs> throw stuck Sarah in. I said, I said, you throw Sarah in, I mean, we'd be lucky if we made it like under 12, you know? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is awesome. No, it is. But you go to work. Go to work, honey. That gives don't, me an yeah, don't, don't go to work. It's not even real work. It's it's, it's not even like, real that's work. what I'm saying. Is like, it's kind of it would be me volunteering just to make my life easier, but I don't really need to. And I think I don't really want okay to. Your time would make it like easier. Do what you yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like I don't really have to, and I don't really want to. So, so you don't. 
I'm just not. Uh, there is like a meeting afterward that I will probably try to mm. catch, um, but that's not for a couple hours now. So I'm just not. I'm not going to race out the door. Plus, my sisters just showed up. There we so. go. Why don't we wrap up the official podcast and go to after show and chat? Because I think I feel we, like we did that we, half an hour. Glenn, were we gonna ever do, or did we do the ah. trivia thing for <laughs> season seven? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We <laughs> never did that, right? I'm not we insane. We never did that. <laughs> okay, I great. Done that. Like, did we do it? <laughs> I didn't know about it. I didn't hear about it. Plus, I've not. Yeah. Um, let- I thought I would have written some questions, but I forgot to do it or never got around to it in the first place. So, do you want me to write some up? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, I will. Um, also, there's going to be another, how many Black Mirror episodes are there? There's going to be like another 30 episodes of the VOK Black Mirror discussion coming up, right? Maybe, <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe. Yes. We've got- <laughs> enough time to kill till the I, don't think there, I don't think there are that many are there I would I don't like know. to plug I'd like to plug my I put up a call to arms on the forums um, for Kurt Vonnegut cast and if you're at all oh, yes. interested uh, okay, if you so... haven't read Kurt Vonnegut you really should and um, I think we're going to go do like a, a book club type thing with it is what we're going to end up doing so even first time readers are welcome and encouraged. And if you're already a fan, then please, please join in the fun. There's a, a CTA up on the forums. I'm going to be on cool. it. Hopefully. I've never read him, although I went to school with his son or something like that. Oh, really? That <laughs> I went to Milton Academy and I think his son was there. Damn. Or worked there. I think his son worked there is what it was. That was it. He's my very favorite author, so... I'm yeah, like, was, um... can I go on <laughs> That's funny. No, um, I think Stephen King's son went to my school and his and Kurt Vonnegut's son like worked there or something like that. <laughs> no one interesting ever went anywhere near my school. Except for me. <laughs> it was private. My sister went to you high went school. To your um, there you go. Yep. Lindsay you're Davenport. Vaguely, you're vaguely interesting. <laughs> Sorry, um, and then, oh, I was just going to say, my sister went to high school with Lindsay Davenport, the famous American tennis player, like the 90s. It's as interesting as we get. I and know. I saw Phyllis Diller once in the Beverly Hills Hilton. It has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, Ian um, McKellen think, owns a pub in walking distance from my flat. I think that eventually, um, within the next few months, Paul and I are going to kind of tag team doing a Dune cast of some ilk, possibly a reread. So, again, if you're interested in that, keep your eyes out for that. So there are, there are some in the works. As always. Oh, there's always so fine. much happening. I love to be okay. I know there's there's <laughs> a lot of topics, a lot you can talk about, and a lot of call to arms as well. So a lot of oh, things you can get involved with. We should yeah. plug the best of 2017. So if you want to yes, record that's like coming. five minutes about, <laughs> I don't know. I'm tired. David promoted it earlier in the episode. I mentioned it. Well, I don't know if we're editing it out, what we're editing or not, but. <laughs> Because obviously you can't use all of this. Yeah. If you want to talk about your favorite things from 2017, you can do that and send it to Bina and it'll be on the best of 2017 episode. That's right. Be that. Movie, TV show, oh. book, CD, Board games, plays. Whatever. <laughs> anything. No, that's, that's if you want to talk fun. with me about Firefly, you should talk with me about Firefly. The board game. There you <laughs> go. <board game. laughs> I still haven't uh-huh. seen the TV show. Oh, they never played. And you we should also just recorded the here. clown. Was that? We also just recorded the clown episode. Uh, clown? And I would. Crown. Um, um, the clown. Oh, the crown. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and being I couldn't make it, so I was the only British person there. Um, uh, sometimes I do search for Vassals of Kingsgrave and find like links to foreign websites that have. I don't know, you can download 
our episodes for some reason, but it's rare. Huh. I wonder what how that came about. Like, is, is they just taking anything to try to like get get clicks or something? Possibly. Yeah. It's the strangest version of piracy ever, if it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love people pi- pirating me. Okay, this is my thing. Right, that's okay. We're okay with that since we don't make any money off it. We don't yeah, care. No. Can you pirate something that doesn't make any money? I don't know. Be okay, anyway. clickbait. <laughs> awesome. Like, there you go. There's, there's like, you know, there's probably like a cult of like 50 people somewhere in China who just never miss one of our episodes who are like, they oh my God. Uh... And they share them and like maybe someone actually sells them and tries to make money. There's like someone on the street going, hey, you need some VOC? <laughs> <laughs> I got VOC here for you. You want some VOC? Don't tell anyone. Oh, remember when there was plans to do a foreign language? Be okay, and like, yeah, that would be we're going. Oh, yeah, that's never happened. It's, it's not right because <laughs> Tanya didn't you want to do it? I, d- I didn't, I wasn't sure. I, w- I, I, I think I was Mary. Oh, right, I d- Mary. I, I said I'd be up yeah, for Mary it, but I found it difficult to see the point. Well, like, that would be the tough part because how would someone find it? You know, like it's someone who doesn't speak English isn't listening to our podcast. So and how like they our even French find listeners out? already listen, and obviously, but it's also what what would I talk about in German that I haven't talked about in English? Like I don't really see the point. Right. I'm not. And why would I make some? Why would I make something less accessible? No, that that makes talk sense. about something I've either talked about or. Right. And anyone who like, does, and let's say someone, let's say you put out one in German that's really cool and the people love it, then they yeah. want to hear more. And oh wait, everything else is in English. Yeah. <laughs> and like, what's I the, did I like really a cult cast idea though. What? What? Like um, people from the different areas of the world that we have on here doing a cultural cast. That would be like, so cool. Yeah, because like, like if we want to do different a link for that one. Yeah, he brings up some ridiculous Danish thing, and I'm like, yeah. tell me more. I feel like every podcast with with Patrick is Danish culture cast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did. Join I think we should do. It was recorded we... one in all about Danish culture and. Like a quest about Danish cu- so it was like the premise was Patrick would ask all these questions for people that obviously don't know the answer because they oh, are yeah. outside of Denmark, and we had to guess like, um, so he would say a phrase and we had to guess what it meant that sort of thing. But it was recorded, but it just hasn't been edited and released. Oh, that that would be fun. I remember part like ten. Telling me I wasn't going to be on it for the sole reason that I might know some of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Denmark, so does that count? <laughs> on a roller coaster trip. So, in fact, I've I've even made use of the Denmark public health system because I dislocated my shoulder at a amusement park on a trampoline oh, and no. had to rush and had to get rushed to the hospital. <laughs> so, speaking of roller coasters, David. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You live in Boston. Right. Which, if I am thinking, is not crazy hard to get from there to Virginia. Is that right? Um, I've been there. Why? <laughs> well, because I'm going to be in Virginia and I'm going to Bush Gardens in June. Ah, you guys awesome should hang part. out. So you should moot up with me you at Bush Gardens. Moot. Can I also come? There we yes. go. Yes. Fly you take over. My flights. <laughs> yeah, That's I'm amazing. gonna be. I'm going to be out there for a few days helping my friend. She's exiting military service and moving back out here. About when? Um, in June, like middle end of June. Possibly, it's possible. Let's see what. Let I me know see what's the weather will probably be nasty, but Bush Gardens is fucking yeah. amazing. So Bush is good. Go. There's, also, there's also another park not too far from there, a few hour, like two hour drive or whatever, called King's Dominion. Yeah, yeah, we we looked into that when we went to Bush Gardens last time, but Bush Gardens is only like forty minutes away. For, she lives in Norfolk, right? Um, and we oh, really I, I, would, I would definitely do both. I mean, I've been when I yeah. go, I use there's three parks in the area. There's um, Six Flags America in like outside Baltimore, and then there's okay. those. Two. So, and I usually do all three if I go. I haven't. I actually haven't been in probably seven, eight years now. Last I'm gonna time take I was, the extra day off I, work just so we can go to Bush Gardens, but really I'm only out there to like help her move. So right. uh, we got a limited time window, but we're definitely doing that because it's going to be feasibly our. So 
Maybe. Can you Skype me into the mood? I will cry if you don't, but no pressure. <laughs> I will. We should try to get some of the other... Uh... I know. I'm surprised we don't do Skype at moots like Boston movie. No one had the thing. Like, we should have Skype. <laughs> that would get everyone. We, could, we should do a, like, one time, like, try to get, like, six different moots around the country, going around the world going on. That would on be so and... cool. I think, time, I think time zones are a bit right. difficult. If you just do it in the U.S., it would be fine. And realistically, I guess it would be weird because you couldn't have a headset. <laughs> I mean, technically, I guess you could argue that every single podcast is a moot because, oh, you know, here we're talking with people with all over the world, you know. True. I'm waiting for Dr. Blood's little baby blood to get a little older and then I'm going to try to moot uh, with her. Can you Skype me and I will cry if you don't. I will. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to get like Amber involved as well. Oh, I want to moot with Amber. It's not Amber. impossible for Amber to get over here. Okay, I'm going to go. Did you ever get around to that mini be okay thing with all mini the, be okay the thing. kids? Please, do the mini be okay thing. We never did, no. I mean, I haven't heard from Nadia in forever, and I was hoping she might be interested in being involved, but I don't know. Patrick has two mini Vikings. Yeah, yeah. and then Brett, Brett's got his, and Adam's got. Adam's got his a mini guy. Adam. Yeah. See, Adam, Adam and, and my son are relatively close in age and okay. like of talking age so they could podcast i feel like it'll be the more centric on that but um but yeah i mean i'm still interested in doing that i don't i don't want to like push people too hard because i know it can be a weird area yeah. like i i was gonna do like the pet chat and then <laughs> like people got offended like i don't want to talk about my animals i don't mom. think anyone got offended but i think it's <laughs> some people are more private than others Right. Yeah, so I was like, uh, maybe, okay, maybe not. Like, you know. Well, I mean, it is interesting to think that we do have, like, I mean, a thousand, a minimum of a thousand people listen to every podcast. I, just, I wouldn't that. talk about my period so much if I realized that there's people listening. <laughs> I just think it's you But guys. you know what? I but I think yeah, that's I one of the, but I think that's one of the great things about us is that, Me you know. talking about my period. <laughs> well, that, and, and in general, the fact that you feel comfortable enough to do so, though, you know? Yeah. I mean, without and realizing. I'm talking about my period in real life, so. There you go. I talk it's about periods in real life a lot as well. Yeah, <laughs> she's out and about. I I always love Margaret Cho's bit about like, you know, what if straight men got their period? We always we always laugh at how women talk about it all the time, but considering how often it happened, it's so little. And like, if men got it, we talk about it oh, all the time. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. funny. Straight men and do get their period going, because. One of the month, all the guys at work get crazy pissy, and right. it's always around my cycle, and I'm like, you guys are having sympathy. <laughs> and see, you're all being little bitches, and whole, you're pushing my buttons. Think about it. Look, look for it online. You can find it. She does a whole thing about if if straight men got, got period, and, and it's really funny. Like, they'd never be prepared. They'd be like, hey, do you... Do you have an extra for me? I'll take the sports section, whatever. And uh, and then she does a like, and then she goes, uh, and what if what if gay men got their period? And she's like, what do you mean, what if? <laughs> yeah, I will say this about your periods, okay? There is a video out on YouTube right now of like some really low fat percentage exercise person. And he has like a Charlie horse in his leg and you can actually see the muscle through his skin cramping. Uh -huh. If you would like to have any indication of what women go through, watch that video and then imagine it's in your lower abdomen, like up inside yeah. where your balls are. Well, I had, I had, that kidney will give you an idea. I had kidney stones and they say that's the only thing that can even remotely compare to pregnancy. And I'm, and I'm like, I, and at that moment I was very glad to be a man. Um, I have to run in about a second, so because my friend Barry just gave me a two-minute warning that he's here. <laughs> so he's actually here now. So I got to run, guys. Right. It was Thanks awesome for talking to you all. Yeah. I'll talk okay, to you all again soon. Bye. 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 Let me figure out what am I doing. Oh, there. There's it. actually been a bag kind of thing devised which um, can fertilize babies without a womb. Hmm. Are we being made redundant? I know there's those muscle stimulation things too that like they put on men that simulate cramps. Oh yeah. And apparent like from their reaction, it definitely seems like okay, it's probably close, but just still, you can turn that off. I can't really like True. opt out. Yeah. I, I me, don't I get periods anymore, <laughs> and it was the best. 
I do not miss having periods at all. I miss my menstrual cup because I love my menstrual cup very much. But I do not miss having periods. Life is so much better now. No, yeah. I miss my periods said no woman ever. I mean, yeah. unless you're pregnant and you don't want to be, then I guess maybe. True. That is That scares me a tiny bit because presumably the fact that I'm not getting periods means it's working. But I also, like, if I was, if I, if I ended up pregnant despite having the implant, it would take forever even, for me to notice. I would never know. Even if you did, Tanya, you would, like, 100% chance miscarry that shit. There's no way. Your your womb is going to be a hospital environment, or, like, a, a hostile environment with that thing in there. That does not make me feel better. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's, yeah. there really is, like, a 0% chance you're going to get, I think, I think the statistic really? is, like, 0.001%. It said, like, some, it said something, like, less than one in a thousand. In a thousand yeah, yeah, it's, but like, it's a ridiculous, like, but it's, but the fact that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't be able to notice that I'm pregnant is pretty scary. I went through a phase of, like, getting really nauseous all the time, which is presumably, like, maybe caused by the implant or whatever, but everything made me nauseous for a while, and that was slightly stressful. Oh, you're um, good. But um, yeah, but but it's just weird because I because I if I was pregnant I'd never even find out. Did you have one period after it was in or none? Yeah, I had one one very early on. Like that was earlier than, than it should have as in than it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how when I had mine in it, I spotted for a little bit and then like two weeks later I had like a mini one and then nothing for. I was. I had it in. So worried I was gonna be one of those women that just bleeds nonstop. Although my husband has a vasectomy, so there was no chance of me getting pregnant anyway. Why did you get the? Um, did you get it for like? I mean, I got well, it because of because of my periods and ovarian right. cysts. Yeah. I mean, I made or, the appointment. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't get it because of my boyfriend or anything. So. Um, yeah, like uh, it was funny though because when I went to go have it removed, mm. I was like, well, um. But what if I get pregnant? And my husband looked at me like, how? <laughs> and I was like, because I'm going to get this out. Like, I had totally forgotten that he had oh, right. to me. And then there was another time where we were talking about, like, if the world ended. And and I was like, well, you'd have to repopulate the earth. And he's like, how? Yeah. <laughs> and I, was like, <laughs> I keep forgetting. It's been so long. Did you still and feel, he, did you feel the, as in, like, so I feel like sometimes... Sometimes where the implant is hurts a little bit. Did you get that? He, I didn't, but he did. When when we would engage, he he said that he could feel it pinching. Really? And he wasn't supposed to. Right. But he didn't want to make me feel bad about it, so he yeah. never said anything for like three fucking years. <laughs> right. So I just want to say my husband is the best. What a patient man. Yeah. <laughs> Because I feel like I, I feel like it hurts a little bit sometimes, and I also feel like sometimes my left if I lie on my left arm, my left hand gets a bit numb. Oh, in you have it in my, your arm. In a way that yeah, where did you have? I yours? had it in my uterus. Oh, you didn't. Oh, so you had like an IUD yeah. or something. Yeah, oh. I had it. No, I've got the the, the hormonal implant thing. Yeah, no, I had the IUD one. So. Oh. Right. Um. Okay, so then the things that I was saying for you to don't, be worried about, you mind. probably don't need to. Yeah, it won't affect you. Yeah. I don't oh. think. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. It uh, gives, like, there's a coppery whole deal when it's in your uterus that... Oh, of course. I would never get yeah. an IUD. I couldn't. I couldn't. I mean, I'm, I'm like, glad they exist because different things are better for different people. So I'm glad yeah, I mean, I never felt it. It hurt coming out, though. Like, that really hurt. Mm. And then they, like, okay, if you want to know what it's like, there's um, there's a YouTube channel that's like, if commercials were real, or if if movie, like, if, if movie trailers were honest, if businesses yeah. were honest. They do one that if, like, the IUD ads were honest. Mm -hmm. And it's so dead on. <laughs> it's It's funny, but it's also, like, dead on, honestly. Sounds stressful. <laughs> it's pretty. Maybe, maybe I don't want to watch that. <laughs> watch like is pretty exact. They're like, we're gonna rip it out of you and then give you one ibuprofen to go home with, even though you're gonna feel like the seventh circle of hell is running around in your body. Like, God, I will not be into that. Anyway, um, well, I'm gonna go. 
and I love you guys. And I'm going to talk to you later. All right. Adios. Hey, thank you. you awesome. Let's do it again really soon. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it's podcast. Yeah. More, Black, more Black Mirror. More Black Mirror. All um, Black Mirror. I'm going to figure out my whole recording deal, Glenn. So if you want me to take some um, and be the ringleader, I'm willing and able. Yeah, okay. Great. Yeah. All right, Especially, cool. Um, yeah, I think the Mikey, that would be great if you can, you know, post some that I might not be able to join. Okay, yeah, I'm going to keep um, troubleshooting it and get it all set up, and then once I do, we can throw out another CTA and plan a, another one. Cool. Maybe let David get a few more into it. Mm. I want you guys to finish four so we can, like, not have to worry too much about spoilers. Yeah, I oh, think yeah. that would be good. I think it would be not easier for those to begin with anyway, but, like, you just don't want to get spoiled on any little bits. Yeah. I also okay. prefer like not even not even knowing what what themes are out there, as in like oh there's like one about social media. Or exactly. Whatever. I'd, yeah. I'd rather not even know that yeah. and be completely surprised by everything, because I don't want to be That's be like oh is this the one that Hannah mentioned? I just don't want to know anything. Right. I think it's best yeah. to be able to relate when you watch it. Honestly, yeah. like, I'm glad like when I discovered the show, like the person that told me about it didn't tell me anything about. It. That's why I didn't realize mm-hmm. it was like, Twilight Zone where it's standalone episodes because yeah, I went into it not, not knowing anything I don't know I think I knew it was standalone I'm episodes, not going to tell you anything know. except for watch this show 